Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Thursday the 3rd of June and it's a, a feast day in the church year. It's a feast of the day of thanksgiving uh, for the institution of Holy Communion. It's also known by the Latin name Corpus Christi and that means the readings today reflect that theme. So as always we'll use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam and we will use one of the readings for today and a reflection on that reading. So as we've gathered we pray together. Blessed are you, creator of all things. The heavens adore you. Let the whole earth worship you. Let all peoples proclaim you. Let all nations obey you. Let us serve you in love and in peace. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our hearts and fill them with love. Come into our minds and fill them with peace. Come into our lives and fill them with light. Come into our days and fill them with glory. Come, Lord, and rule. And the psalm on a Thursday is Psalm 145. Your faithful servants bless you. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendour of your majesty and all your marvellous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. Your faithful servants bless you. As I say, today we have special readings because of the feast of uh, the day of Thanksgiving for the institution of communion. And so the reading comes from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians from chapter 10. Paul says, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptised into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil, the evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality, as some of them did, and in one day 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ, as some of them did, and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples, and were written down as warnings for them on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has, has overcome you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we, who are many, are one body, for we all share the one loaf. And let me read a reflection on that passage written for us by the Reverend Liz Hoare. Christian freedom is a wonderful gift, but one that is easily abused. Life's experience teaches us that true freedom does not mean doing as we please, because that is a sure way for everyone, ourselves included, to get hurt. The Corinthians were in danger of hurting themselves by treating their newfound freedom in Christ irresponsibly. So Paul reminds them of their history. The people of Israel abused their newly won freedom, he says, and look what happened to them. It seems the Corinthians thought that baptism and the Eucharist would protect them where idolatry was concerned. But sacraments are not a magic talisman. 
Sharing bread is a means of sharing in the body of Christ. But just as Exodus is a terrible warning not to presume on God's loving kindness, so partaking of the one bread does not bring automatic protection and blessing. Coming as it does in the midst of reading the book of Romans, with its emphasis on the glorious freedom given in Christ, the feast of Corpus Christi reminds us of the cost involved in giving us that freedom. It urges us to practice that freedom in a way that matches our new identity. The Eucharist unites us to Christ in faith and loyalty, keeping Christ as our vision of life in all its fullness and living out of that vision means that betrayal becomes unthinkable. And I'm going to pray the collect, the special prayer for today. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament, you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so we continue in prayer, that the Church may show its unity in Christ, that all churches may work together for the benefit of all peoples, that all movements towards unity may prosper, that divisions and conflicts may cease, that the world may find lasting peace, that none may hunger or thirst, Lord graciously hear us, that the barriers that divide may be broken down, that we may live in unity, peace and concord, that we may come to mutual understanding and care, Lord graciously hear us. And a prayer written by the Corrymeela community. God of neighbours, you call us to love. God of neighbours, we know only as strangers. The knitting together of our frayed social fabric starts with threads close to home. From door to door, may we stitch a society of friendly exchanges, of glances that become real hellos. In a shared cup of sugar or the lending of hands, may we make the connections and widen the circles that let more and more know love is near. Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Lord, be with us to guide us, within us to strengthen us, without us to protect us, above us to raise us, beneath us to uphold us, before us to lead us, behind us to guide us, ever about us this day and evermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for prayer today. I do hope you have a great day and uh, do comment and um, if you're free tomorrow, come and join us again here at 9.45. Take care. Bye-bye for now.